Freemasonry will take you to places that uh, you never dreamed possible. Uh, once you're a Freemason, it, it is for life. My name is Ben Hinton and I was Worshipful Master of this Lodge in the year 2000. It started back in 1952. A little did I know that uh, I would become Master of this Lodge in the year 2000. A past Master is uh, someone that has completed the seven chairs in this Lodge. There is seven chairs in here that must be filled uh, by uh, installation and a proclamation made in order for him to uh, go through the line. When you join the Masonic Lodge, uh, of course you take your first three degrees in masonry to become a Master Mason, and you have no idea where that's going to lead you. Well, it's, that most of all has taught me to do things uh, that I was, didn't think I was capable of doing. And I got a feeling that uh, a lot of people that come into Lodge and they see the little ciphering books and different things and they're told that there's a certain amount of stuff they need to commit to memory. Uh, think, boy, I can never do this. Well, you can't. You know, if I can do it, anybody can. The things that we learn in here is what's keeping this Lodge afloat and I'm extremely proud of it. And I was told by a, a past Grand Master, uh, Most Worshipful Brother Max Carpenter. He told me, Ben, he said, if you accomplish this, you'll make anything out of masonry that you really want, and that's peace and happiness. But first of all, you have to learn to communicate. So the first three things you need to learn is communications, communications, and communications. Brother, if you learn that, you've accomplished a lot. We do great ritual work here, and fortunately one thing we must remember, we've got some very nice young people coming into this lodge that's seeking greater light than what's on the outside right now. We have a, a great worshipful master here right now, Jerry Vanderlinde, and I trust this man with all my heart. And I, I do believe that with his guidance that uh, We'll be good. We'll be in good shape here for the next, uh, at least the next seven years. In our activities, that we support the Schofield House. I think Jerry's going to get in touch with the curator at Grand Lodge to do an interdependence degree there. We have a young man here who happens to be the Grand Secretary for the Grand Lodge of the Free and Accepted Masons, and that's the most forceful brother, Richard J. Elman. I was here uh, every time that he got a degree, I was here. And believe me, this young man has carried masonry to places that's beyond uh, what I had comprehended at the time that he went in. So the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Uh, but I'm extremely proud of him, and I know that when we were on his committee for five years, uh, that's probably been one of the highlights of my uh, adventure into masonry was being on his committee. Yes. We have uh, a past master here by the name of Rip Johnson, uh, and his two sons, two of his four sons, are members of this lodge. Uh, all three of them are past masters of this lodge, and uh, Isaac and Rip were the ones that rebuilt all of this inside here. Uh, Rip's wife, Bonnie, was the one that uh, marbleized the columns, and she painted these columns, and she marbleized the one in the east and the one in uh, the south. She's very talented. She also painted the heavens. So I... I think I'm very proud of those folks. Uh, they've done a lot for this lodge.
If these walls could talk, I would be probably sitting here for hours on end about some of the things that uh, that's went on in this lodge. You know, it's. Uh, I was once told by a grand master that uh, there was a lot of serious things that go on in this lodge room, but don't take yourself too serious. That is really true. You know, we do have a good time here, and we try our best to keep it in order as much as we possibly can, and hopefully these young people will carry that tradition on down the line too. We seem to have a very good time. The Worshipful Master had directed us to go out and receive the candidate to bring him in. I looked over Rudy and all of a sudden he fell face first right out into the floor. Well, little did we know that Rudy hadn't had anything to eat for five days. So once he got some food in him, he was okay. We had a minister in our church that uh, called me one night at midnight. And he said, hey, Benny, he said, I got a great idea. I said, the idea is to let me get a little more sleep. And he said, no, he said, uh, I think if Elvis Presley would show up at church tomorrow, we could sell some tickets. I said, well, where are you going to find him? He said, I just did. I want you to be there in your Elvis costume. And this one lady, you know, as she come up to sit down, she says, well, I wonder who that is. And I said, well, there's Elvis Presley, huh? Who do you think it is? So uh, you can ask Charlie all about that. He's, Charlie's got the true story about it. Because I played four different characters that night. I'll tell you one thing Charlie called me. He told me I was the ugliest woman he ever seen in his life. <laughs> he, said, he said, he told that in here one night. He said, he was the ugliest woman I ever seen in my life.